This is your warning. This video contains content that might not be appropriate for all audiences. Hey everybody, we're back and we're really excited that we're back because we have some big news that we're going to share with you in the next coming videos. But first, we kind of wanted to give you guys a recap of what we've been up to this summer. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Brina and my husband and I have been sailing for the past nine years. Yeah, big one's throttle. The one thing that we've learned throughout all these years is there's like two main challenges when it comes to cruising and they're big challenges. It's not like, you know, getting the perfect yoga pose on the top deck for Instagram or, you know, storm watching or anchor dragging, like all that shit, it happens and you deal with it and you figure it out. Like you'll do it, you can do it, everyone can do it. But some of the challenges that everybody is trying to figure out and nobody has a solution for and everybody is struggling with is making money and cruising and also trying to balance like land life family and friends and fostering those relationships while you're out there traveling and moving around and you're like a moving target and i'm saying all this because this summer seemed to be just the epitome of the two challenges like coming to a head and intensifying for us an intense time warp <laughs> and it all started with me committing ourselves to go to Boise, Idaho to babysit my niece. And that I committed to when we were in Florida and we had three days to get there. Been on the road for six hours and Brina stopped the pee about five times. Okay. How was that? I'm ready. For another 45 minute drive. <laughs> has pneumonia. <sighs> it's been a little rough. Pickle. Pickle. <laughs> Damn it. Living that kid life. That Not that I ever thought it was going to be easy. I will say that right now. We've actually had a lot of conversations so we thought it was easy. Did we share it this week? No. Not once. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's actually vomiting my hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Hey, let's not have kids. So after visiting family there, we flew to Alaska where a portion of our life was still rooted and we sold everything to make money. Not 
sounds sad. <laughs> Okay, day one complete and we have the roof off, the walls off, and the rafters down. It's going down really fast, which is kind of awesome but also a little bit sad. <laughs> The awesome thing is that Emily is the one that bought our yurt and you guys met Emily when she took us dog mushing. I'm excited it's going to one of our friends, so. And it's going to such a good use. Day two of yurt disassembly. And uh, I'm fully admitting now that I just do not like manual labor. <laughs> Nor am I good at it, so. <laughs> Unfortunately, Emily and Thomas cannot come today. So it's just Spencer and I, which I'm sure Spencer is thrilled about. <laughs> We have the help of a forklift, which is very nice and handy because those concrete countertops weigh about a thousand pounds. Well, after 20 minutes of work, we've taken a load to the house and I've demanded breakfast, so <laughs> we stopped for half hour and Spencer made burritos. You're a hell of a hand, B. Thank you, Spence. It's amazing to get anything fucking done. <laughs> you're a lot more, you're more paperwork oriented. Yeah, we, have, we both have our strengths. This is not mine. Day four of taking apart the yurt. And I think we're gonna get her done today. Look it, that's all that's left. I'm even less so a fan of manual labor today than I was yesterday. <laughs> Exhausted. Isn't this weird to think we lived in here for two years? So we sold the yurt, and even though it was a little bittersweet, it propelled us forward, which was awesome because we had accumulated now a little bit more cash, and we had also kind of closed the door on Alaska. But we still didn't have enough money to buy this boat that we had made an offer on and committed to paying for. So we had to get real jobs. I know. I know. Our real jobs are project managers and in this awesome gig economy we were able to snag a few project management gigs this summer on a cruise ship, which I know sounds really awesome and all of you are like, oh my god, she works on a cruise ship? But it's not like that. This is not just any cruise, where every detail is beyond just ordinary. It's so beyond ordinary that having a chair in your room becomes a luxury. You won't walk on just any stairs. You'll risk your life with no safety regulations or oversight. You won't be served just any meal. You'll enjoy freshly prepared international cuisine. But mostly just coffee that tastes like it's filtered through an old sock. And you won't explore just any destination. You'll actually enjoy no destinations while you're stuck in a hellscape of horrible decor. Like why the fuck is Zorro amongst all these explorers? Why are these women wearing bananas? And I'm pretty sure this one's racist. And if there's any confusion about where your dollars are going, visit the atrium, where you'll be reminded that all your money is going straight to corporate America. 
Green and Spencer Slay in the other YouTube channel. Yeah. You'll encounter travelers from all over the world. But mostly your Latin American crew, where high school Spanish doesn't cut it. Actually, right now, Brandon's telling this guy not to sleep on the job. Nailed it. Because this is not just any cruise. This, it's fucking work. When all said and done this summer, we had really, like, put our nose to the grindstone. Is that the thing? Put our nose in We worked hard. <laughs> So thanks for watching everybody, and if you're new here, I hope you decide to stick with us because we have some really exciting videos coming up and I think you're really going to enjoy them. Thanks everyone. See you next week.